Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. And in this tutorial, we're going to make this cute little Valentine bag. Now you can fill it with chocolates, what I, which is what I do at the end of the video, but you know what? It's perfect for a gift card, perfect for a necklace, a pair of earrings, um, any little thing that you want to put in here. And it's just a, a fun, fast project, but you're going to learn some um, techniques. If, if you don't know how to duplicate stitch, we're going to do that. And we're also going to do the figure eight stitch um, so that we have the holes for the ribbon to go through. So we're going to use our 22 needle machines. And I used Bernat Premium yarn um, in these three colors that you see here. Um, but you use whatever yarn your little heart desires, and it's going to look beautiful. So grab your materials and let's get started. But friends, before you go any further, hit that like button underneath this video and if you if you haven't subscribed to my channel already please do that it would uh, help me out a lot and I would really appreciate that so grab your supplies and let's get going all right so if you're ready to begin so am I so we're going to bring our last white and our first black needle in line with our yarn guide we're going to um, if, if you haven't done so already take a black permanent marker and mark that red divider between the two then you always know when the end of your row is um, coming up okay so we're going to take our yarn put the tail into the center go behind that first black needle in front of the next behind and in front all the way around and cast on when we get about halfway around or so before we get to the beginning I'm going to set my row counter to zero okay so that we're ready and we're going to keep going it should be in front of that last white needle we're going to pop that into the yarn feeder and we are going to knit 14 rows okay Go slow on that first one so that those little loops can get down over the red teeth and pick up your stitches. There we go. Three, four, and I'm going to do 14. Holding my yarn in between my thumb and my finger like that, but not putting any pressure on it, just guiding it, okay? Or like that, and not putting, again, any extra tension on it, just letting it slip through my fingers. And this is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and one more. And now we get to, and you see that black divider coming around? See, so I always know when to stop. It's perfect. Open your latch, take out your yarn, make sure it goes behind that last white needle. We're going to do one row of figure eight stitch. Now, this is so fun. If you've never done it before, don't be scared. It's easy. I'm going to show you exactly what to do, okay? So we're going to bring up the first two needles which are the first two black needles we're going to go across till you get in front of that second one loop it in behind there go in between come around this other one oops go in between just like that and don't pull on it like don't make it really tight you want it loose okay and knit it bring the next two needles up and we're going to do the same thing around your needle like that in front and around just like that and keep going so I'm gonna say that this is in front and this is behind then I can explain it to you okay so you're gonna go in front of that second needle and behind and then in between the two in front of the first needle behind and in between the two bring up the next two needles in front of the second one behind the second one in between the two of them in front of the first one wrap it around to behind and go in between the two again bring up the next two i'm just going to show you very slowly again I feel like this is such a solemn moment. <laughs> like you need me to be quiet to understand it. <laughs> but again, you wrap that second needle, then you come around and you wrap the first one in a figure eight. And it's easy. I'm not putting much tension on it at all. These are my last two needles. I'm going to do that. And you're going to put your yarn tail in between the last white and the first black. That's always our, be our starting motion. And we're going to knit four rows. So for this first row, you want to make sure that you help all those little loops down over the red teeth. They'll automatically, most of them will automatically pop down, but I make sure and I, I just help them all down. Okay. 
So there we go. That was the first row. Now I just clicked on 17, 18, and 19. So that's four rows of straight knit after I did my figure eight. Now, this is the first half of our project. We're going to do the second half of our project, which is a mirror image. So now I'm going to knit four more rows of straight knit. That's 20, 21, 22, and 23. I see that black divider coming around. I'm going to stop right there. We're going to take it out of the yarn feeder in between the last white and the first black, and we're going to do our figure eight again, okay? So those first two needles, pick up the next two needles behind and in, fr in front and behind of that second one, and then in front and behind of the first one. Always go right across to that second one for and do that one first, okay? This is going to give us that loop that we need to put our ribbon through. like that. And this should be row 24 being completed. And then what we want to do is make sure that that yarn is between the last white and the first black once again. And we're going to help it down over the first row, but we're going to knit our last 14 rows, and that will be row 25 to 38. Okay, so help that down. This is row 25, the first row of 14 rows. And I'm going to go, oops, till row 38. Very quick project. Probably the fastest project I've ever done on my, on my channel, but I thought, how can we make a cute little Valentine candy holder basket? And I thought, well, why not try this? So this is what we're going to do. And we're going to, that's 35, 36, 37, and 38. There we go. Just like that. I'm going to line that black divider in front. Then what you're going to do is you're going to cut off a tail long enough to go around your barrel one and a half times or so. Open your latch, put it between the last white and the first black, drop that down into there. We are going to cast off. Thread your needle. These are metal wool needles if um, if you want to know where I, uh, what they're called. And I they come in a pack of three and three different sizes and I get them either on Amazon or Walmart. Everybody always asks so I want to make a mention. You're going to turn your handle, that first black needle drop down, making this loop um, able to remove. So then you just put your needle through, just like this, and pull it. And we're going to take all of our stitches off that way. If you're new, then you're going to want to hold your finger over that next one as you pull these off. Because if I lift up on this too high and this loop comes off of this red, these red teeth, it's going to drop the roll. Okay? So you don't want to bother. You don't want to have to fix that. So you just... Um, be sure if, if you aren't new and you've done this and you know the feel of the tension, then you just go ahead and you just keep taking them all off. Grab yourself some pretty ribbon that matches. I'm going to just use white ribbon and there's what it looks like so far. And then meet me back. Now that I have it off the machine, I'm going to stretch it width wise. And lengthwise, all those sections there. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to pull our one end tight, but I'm not going to pull it completely closed. I'm going to put my little cinch guide in there um, and then close it around that because I don't want it to be, it'll sit nicer if it's not quite so tight. Now a cinch guide is something that comes, if you order, if you watch my channel and you'll see some of the beanies that I've made, I use removable palm, palmkins. That's this thing here that we can attach to our pom-pom. And you can put it inside, remove your pom poms from your beanies. When you order pomkins, um, and I'm not affiliated with it at all, but when you order, but I just love them. When you order pomkins, you get a cinch guide that comes with it, which, which helps you to keep the opening the right width. But it works perfect for this too. So um, I'll have the pomkins linked down below in uh, in the description box 
in case you want to order them. Oh, here's my snack of the day. Where is my small needle? Did I drop it on the floor? There it is. Okay, and then we're going to just tighten around it. So, yeah, my snack. <laughs> I'm always snacking on something. So, I got like ripple chips there, but you know what, guys? I'm like balancing it with a glass of water. So, there you go. And now let's just get focused here and <laughs> get back to the projects. <laughs> so, you're going to go around and you're going to just reinforce that top row of stitches. If you don't have a cinch guide, put a pen in there or just when you're tightening it up, leave a little bit of a hole. That way um, it'll sit better. It, it just will make this look more like a basket um, and it'll look a little bit better, okay? So now I'm gonna take that out of there. See, it just got a little bit of hole and that's on the bottom. Nothing's gonna fall out. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm going to place my needle into that center, grab it with my hand on the inside so that I don't snag anything and I'm gonna pull this through and in half, okay? Bring that yarn tail through. We're going to do the same thing to this other side. You can put the cinch guide right back into that center of the other one if you want, and that'll help. Or your pen, or whatever it is you're using. And then, so multiple uses, although it's meant to be used so that you can have the right size hole for your pom-pom holder, um, it works for other projects too, like this one. I'm gonna cut this off because it's too long, getting in my way. Thread my needle. I'm going to go around and I'm going to reinforce the bottom of this end as well. Just like that. Oops, maybe I cut it a little too short and now it's going to give me problems with the tail. But that's okay, we persevere. Just like that. Get that end out of the way. I'm going to go around a little bit more here. gonna go so that I'm close to that other tail. Then I'm gonna tie the two. Again, the end of a pen will work too. Tie the two just like so. I can take this out now. I'm gonna hide this tail in between the two layers. I'm gonna take a bigger needle that will help me. Just like so. Pull it out. Cut it off. And there we have our little basket. And you can see, like, this... Between this figure, the figure eight on this side and the figure eight on this side, we did four rows. So that's the rim at the top. And then in between these loops is where we're going to put our, our ribbon. Okay? So go ahead and stretch that out nicely. Grab yourself, see it's not quite so pointy if you have a little bit of an opening there. Grab yourself some ribbon. I'm going to grab some white ribbon. My ribbon piece is 16 inches long. Okay. And we're going to thread our needle. And then in these little sections where we did our figure eight, if you just stick your hand in there, it will naturally find that hole for you. You're going to come from the outside and go in with your ribbon. Then you're going to find that next one, just like that, and you're going to go from the inside out, making sure that you don't pull that through. Okay, then you're going to find your next one. Just feel with your fingers and you'll get it. Like that, go inside, and there you go. So we've got this four, these four rows of straight knit that's between. And that will help you to, if you if you put them in half and line it up, then you should easily be able to get your finger in there. And you're going to weave this in and out. All the way around. Okay. And it doesn't really matter... Um, if you've got, you know, when you put your finger in there, you find the natural hole. But if you've got one of these these yarn threads in the wrong, well, you, it won't happen, actually, because it just naturally takes its place. But it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, Oops, except for you don't want to split a stitch like what that one just did. Okay, and then I'm going to go into this one. 
and I'm going to come out that same one that I started in. It's just like that, okay? Oops, except for I lost it off my needle. Just like so. And that's going to give me the ability to tie this into it. Once I fill it with candy, I'm going to tie it into a knot. But before we do that, I just wanted to show you how to do that part. We're going to tuck that in there. You're going to grab some white yarn or whatever color of yarn you want to use for the heart. And I'm going to do um, a duplicate stitch heart on the front of this. And it's going to be so cute. So grab your white yarn. I'm going to use the same needle, the smaller one that I had that I dropped again. And uh, <laughs> that little thing likes to take off on me all the time. I don't know why, but it does. Um, I've got several of them though, so I'm not worried. And I'll be right back with you. All right, friends, do not be scared of the duplicate stitch. If you haven't done it before, it's quite simple. So um, you'll enjoy it. It'll be fun. We're going to take that row where the wide part of the V is at the top there and it's in the middle. So we're going to follow that down. Go to about one, two, three, three stitches up. We're going to duplicate stitch the fourth one, this one here. So just eyeball it. It doesn't matter. Um, wherever you want the point of your, of your heart to be, that's the stitch that you're going to duplicate. Okay. So if I'm going to duplicate this stitch, I need to go into the base of that stitch. So I'm going to go underneath the side here and come up to the base of that stitch. I went between the two layers there. I'm going to pull my yarn through. If this is the stitch I'm going to duplicate, I've got to go to the one right above it and pick up both bars. Pull that through. Okay. Then we have to finish that stitch. So we're going to go back down into the point of, of that stitch. But before we do so, we're going to determine where we're going to go next. So for the point of my heart, I just need one in this row. Then for this next row, I'm going to do three. These three stitches right there are the ones I'm going to duplicate. If I'm going to start here and I want to duplicate this stitch, I got to come down into the base of it. So I'm going to go from the point of this stitch up to the point of that stitch I'm going to duplicate. Pull this through, but don't pull tight. You just want it to sit nicely on there, okay? Um, then the texture looks a lot better. This is the stitch I'm going to duplicate, so I'm going to go into the stitch above it, pull through, And let it nicely sit on that stitch. Then we're going to, I'm going to take my left hand here. We're going to go into the point of that stitch to finish it off. But I'm going to come up into the point of this next stitch. The one right beside it is the one we're going to duplicate. Pull that through to finish off that stitch. Just like so. So this one right beside it is the next one. So I'm going to go above it, pick up those two bars, and bring it through. This is how you duplicate stitch, friends. It's easy, okay? And then I'm going to finish that stitch off. So I'm going to go into the point where I came out, and I'm going to go over to this next one here. I'm going to go into the base of the stitch that I'm going to duplicate. Pull this through. I always put my thumb on there because then I find it doesn't, doesn't gather it and stretch it in all kinds of wonky positions, okay? There we go. I'm going to duplicate this stitch here. So I got to go up to the top, the one that's right above it. Go underneath both of those bars. And of course, I'm going to go back into that point to finish it off. But I want to do five in the next row. So if I'm going to do these three and one on either side. So I'm going to do this one and this one. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my needle into there and I'm going to go into the base since I'm closer to this side I'm just going to go up into that point of the stitch that I want to duplicate pull that through to finish off this stitch this is the stitch I'm duplicating so I'm going to go up to the next one pull it through just like that this is the stitch I'm going to do next I'm going to go into the base to finish off this one come up into the base of the one that I'm going to do Pull it through. This is the one I'm duplicating, so I'm going to go up into the one above it, pull it through, come down into the base to finish that off, and go into the next one, the base of the stitch I'm going to duplicate. Pull that through. This is the one I'm duplicating, so I've got to go to the one above it. And then to finish that off, and I'm going to go into the one beside it. This will be fourth in this row. Just 
just like so. This is the stitch I'm going to duplicate. So I'm going to go to the one above it. And you see the patterning that is taking place here. I'm going to finish this one off. This is where you got to be careful on the edge one because you don't want to do this one up here and you don't want to do this one down here. The stitch that we want to duplicate is the one that's right beside the one we're finishing off here, which is, it looks a little lower because this one is higher now, but like because of the depth of this one. So this is the stitch we want to duplicate. So we're going to go into this point. So I'm going to finish that one off, go over into this one, pull it through. Now I'm going to duplicate stitch the last one. This is the fifth one in this row. Now, before I finish this off, I'm going to give you instructions as to what we're going to do next. So we're going to finish that one off. So we have one, three, five. We're going to do the end two. So we're going to do these two here, and then we're going to do these two. Okay. So I'm going to take my needle, put it into the point to finish that one, and then just go straight up to that one that's right above it. Okay. This is the one I'm duplicate stitching. So I'm going to go to the one on top of it. Then let me just put this in my left hand, although I'm terrible with my left hand. We're going to go into there and we're going to come up into the point of this stitch because that's the one we're duplicating next. All right, so this is the one that we're doing. So we're going to go on the one on top of it, pull it through. Again, go into the point of that stitch. Go between the two layers and we're going to come on over to this one. Okay. And from there, I'm going to go over to the next one into the point to finish it off up to the point of that one that I'm going to duplicate. And we're going to finish it off. Do I want to do another row? Generally, I would stop here and then I'm going to, uh, yeah, we're going to stop there. I'm going to go into that point I was going to do another row of doubles and you can if you want it a little bit higher but I'm going to leave it there I just want a nice simple heart I'm going to pull that out just like that you're going to cut this off tie a knot don't tie this first one too tight because you'll pull on you'll compromise your stitches then the second knot that you do can be tighter just like that. Put this back on your needle. Put it in through the hole, the stitch that you just tied that, that you came out of, and you're going to weave it through the layers up into the white section. That way if it pokes through you won't see it because it's in the white section. Pull it up just ever so slightly, snip it off, then pull up on your work and it'll hide, hide that tail on the inside. There is our little heart. Now what you want to do is you're going to grab your secondary color. I'm going to take pink. Now, when I was little, pink and red did not go together. But now that I'm all big, <laughs> and in this season of life, pink and red go together. <laughs> you often see people putting pink and red together. So I like it, and I'm going to do it for projects like this. I, I personally would never wear it in clothes, but I would, I would do it in a project. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to duplicate stitch underneath this one, underneath this one. This one, we're gonna go up the side here twice. We're gonna do one above, one above, one above, one above, one above, and two on the sides. Um, and then one here, okay? So I'm gonna come up into the, we're just outlining it, up into the work there. And because, I'm gonna pull that through, because this is the stitch I'm duplicating, I'm gonna go into the point of that stitch. And then I have to go above it just like this. You can go under just the pink or you can go under the, or just the white, or you can go under the white and the red. I'm going to go under the white and the red if I can. And then we're going to come back down into that point to finish it. 
I'm going to come into the point of the stitch that I want to duplicate in this row, pull this through. This is the stitch I'm going to duplicate, so I'm going to go underneath this one. And then come over and finish that off. Next takes me to this one here. Pull that a little snug, go underneath. Oops. Duplicate this stitch. And let me just put this down because once I duplicate this stitch, I want to do the one that's in the row beside this one and in the row beside this one. And you might have to manipulate your work a little bit because this has got more depth to it. It's kind of putting it off center, but just be sure you know which row you're going into. So I'm going to go into this stitch here, pulling that through to finish off that. I want to duplicate this one, so I'm going to go above it. And I'm going to go back into that point and come right up into the very next point, just like that. All you have to do is pick up one bar, pull that through. I'm going to duplicate stitch this one, duplicate stitch, so I'm going to pull up on that one that's above it. And now I want to do this one, so i got to go into the point there. So I'm going to go back into this point to finish it off. I'm going to come up into this one. I always find if you put your push down on your thumb while you're pulling the yarn through, then it makes it better. It looks better. Okay, and then I'm going to, it's neater. Do that one. Pull it through, a little tighter, come across into the center of this one. See how pretty that is? Oh, love it. This is the one I'm duplicating, so I gotta go up above it. Now, this is the one here that we're gonna duplicate, so we gotta come down into the point. Right there. Pull that through, fix it so it's not all wonky. Come up into this one. Then we're gonna go and duplicate this one. So we have to go into the point of it and then up into there. So we're gonna take that into this point. See how easy this is? And you know what, it's so relaxing. It's like, if you've ever done cross stitching, you know how relaxing it can be. This is the same to me. And we're going to go down into the point of this stitch because that's the one we want to duplicate. Let me switch left hand and do my left hand here if I can. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is hard. And there we go. Up to this one. Now, I want to duplicate these two. This one here and this one here. They're in line with that, so I have to come down into the point of that one. So I'm going to put my... Needle in there to finish that stitch. Pop it down into the, the same spot, then come up in the next one. And go underneath those two. What did I do with this one? I snagged that on. I'm going to pull that one out. So I'm going to put my finger on this one and press on it so that I can not compromise it as I pull these ones out. This one I went into, I didn't go quite far enough, I don't think. What did I do there? Oh, because I'm down a little bit too far, I can see the, oops, I can see the bar that's in between it. So let me just, uh, I'll show you one second here. If it doesn't look right, it's probably because it isn't. So I'm going to go back into there and come up there. I just went down a little too far and I could tell, but now I'm going to snag this. There, I just backed up the stitch so that I could not make a mess of it and get a knot there. I didn't want to get a little knot because then that would not have been good. So I'm going to do that again.
something does not appear right here to me. Okay, I am above the bar of this little stitch, but I gotta go below it, okay? On this side, instead of above it. That's the, that was the problem. I was just going a little bit off. There we go, that's perfect. And then under the bar here, of the one below it. Sometimes it can look a bit confusing, but it's uh, it's all right, you'll get it. Get that out of the way. And finish off this one. Then I wanna come down right here, cause I'm gonna do the red stitch that's below that white row. I'm gonna loosen this. There we go, that's better. Sometimes one wants to fight with you, so you just have to show it who's boss. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Come down. I need to do this stitch right here that's underneath this white row. If you can't get under the red very easily, just go under the white. And then I'm gonna finish off this little stitch here by going into the point again and coming out on this side right there and then I'll assess the situation before I go ahead and I love it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So now what you're gonna do is you're going to cut this off, tie it off, and hide your end. Fun little project. Once you make one of these, you guys, you'll be able to whip off, you know, several in no time at all. They're, you know, they're, they're not hard. They're very, they're, they're quite easy to make. And so, and they're a quick project. Again, I don't think I've ever made a project this small on my channel before, but I thought of it last night and I thought, yeah, I'm going to do that. Why not? And it was an excuse to go out and buy some chocolate too. Okay. Which of course, you know, well, no, maybe I'll give it to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but once you have that done, you're going to fill it with treats. I've got some Reese's Pieces, red hearts and gold hearts. These are chocolate with peanut butter. And folks, yesterday I fell on the ice. <laughs> I broke my wrist in two places. This is the soft cast. Tomorrow I get the hard cast. So it breaks my heart because I won't be able to knit for a while because I really can't do much with this hand. But I'm going to put some in there. But that's okay. It's just a small little thing in life and it will get better. And uh, we're all good. We're going to put some treats in there. Then I'm going to take a little square of tissue paper, tuck that in the top, and then we're going to give this a little tie. We're going to try anyways. If your ribbon is not in the center of your little heart there, then just move it in between these little lines here to make sure that your two ends are centered. Okay? And you're going to give it a little tie. Just like that. Of course, you're going to make it a little bit better with the tissue paper than what I can. And you're going to put a bow on there, which I will do off camera. <laughs> I'll get my husband or somebody to do it. Okay. And there you have a cute little treat bag to give away. You can put a gift card in there. Uh, really, lots of little things will fit in there. A necklace. You can, whatever your little heart desires, you just fill in this little bag. And uh, it's just so adorable. Make them in lots of colors. Make it with a white background and pink and purple heart or a pink background and white and, and purple or whatever you like and uh make your little your little gift bag there you go my friends i hope you enjoyed this tutorial please don't forget to like and subscribe and uh i'm gonna go help myself to one of these little chocolates maybe two <laughs> okay so take care thanks again for joining me and i'll see you in the next tutorial which by the way, I'm not sure when that will be, but as soon as I possibly can. All right, friends, until then, take care and we'll see you soon.